But again, the latest information that we have, Fox News has learned that Hassan Nasrallah was the target of this large strike in the Lebanese capital of Beirut. Nasrallah is at the top of the food chain for this Iran-backed group, responsible for firing thousands of rockets into northern and central Israel since October 8th. He's a man who took over for Hezbollah leadership in 1992 and has led the organization since. You might remember the second Lebanon war back in 2006. Following that 31-day conflict, Nasrallah said had he known the destruction that would come to Lebanon, he would not have launched the war that took place then. If this is confirmed and the death of Nasrallah is confirmed here in the Middle East, it is an unprecedented moment. And remember what it follows. It follows a speech earlier today by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at the UN General Assembly and also a visit by Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant to troops in the northern part of this country who are staging for the possibility of a ground operation into southern Lebanon. So right now we are waiting to gather more details. You can see right there there is smoke rising and I believe that's a skyline shot uh, from Beirut following this massive strike. Journalists on the ground in the Lebanese capital report hearing multiple explosions. And Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the top spokesman for the Israeli military, said publicly that the target of this strike was the command and control center underneath a building in the Lebanese capital. And again, Fox News has learned at this hour that the target of the strike was Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. Martha. ضربوا وراء مستشفى الزهراء هون ما مبين شيء هون هذا الملعب يا شباب هاي بنيتك يا علي الموسى
23 GMT, 2 a.m. in Lebanon, where Israel has begun its ground offensive into the south. A short while ago, Israeli forces fired flares into the night sky amid heavy shelling. Israeli soldiers and military vehicles have been amassing along the border over the past several hours. Flares are commonly used to signal troops on the ground and light their path, as well as to confirm targets. Throughout Monday, Israeli airstrikes continued to target southern Lebanon. Intense bombing was seen in Marjayoun. By night, airstrikes hit the area of Tyre near the coast. Hezbollah says it's fighting back with shelling and rocket attacks. Several Israeli airstrikes have hit the southern suburbs of Beirut. A series of loud explosions were heard across the city just after midnight. Those attacks came shortly after Israeli forces repeated their same tactic of issuing chaotic evacuation orders that we have seen in Gaza. Meanwhile, in northern Israel, the army has declared closed military zones. Entry to the town of Metula on Israel's border with Lebanon has been prohibited. The communities of Kafar Giladi and Mizgav Am are also closed. 
Well, we have a team of correspondents covering all angles of this developing story in Washington, D.C., Beirut, Marjayoun, southern Lebanon. But first we go to Amman, Jordan, where Hamda Salhut is. And across all the latest lines coming out of Israel, Hamda, in just the last few minutes, a statement from the Israeli military confirming that it's been conducting limited incursions into southern Lebanon. into sovereign Lebanese territory. An army statement said that this actually began a few hours ago after the approval from the political echelon within Israel. These are the meetings that we've been talking about over the last couple of hours that included the Israeli prime minister, his security cabinet, and then other security and defense officials. The army says that First, they launched these what they call targeted and precise raids based on intelligence and that they are going to launch this offensive on the ground in order to achieve their goals of restoring the balance of power along the border, as well as returning those evacuated Israelis back to those towns and settlements that have been evacuated since the cross-border fire began. The Israeli army has said that they are looking to target Hezbollah posts and other military infrastructure in the border area. It does not say how deep they plan to push into Lebanese territory, but make no mistake, this is now a full Israeli invasion into Lebanon. Hey, shalom, everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati. These are super breaking news. Um, and I hope that you guys can connect uh, very, very soon, experience some internet issues. Breaking news, folks, super important breaking news. The U.S. just informed Israel a few minutes ago that Iran is preparing to launch in, in the foreseeable future, right now, a massive rocket attack on Israel. Again, the United States of America received intelligence and immediately informed Israel that Iran is about to launch an attack on Israel in the very, very uh, immediate future. Now, remember what the Prime Minister said. He said, if Iran will strike, we will immediately strike back. So, we might see in the next 48 hours a massive strike on Israel and an even greater retaliation from our side that will cripple the Iranian economy and even maybe nuclear program. I hope you understand. First of all, we want to continue on with some other breaking news that we are following for you. We are going overseas now. This is a live look in Beirut as uh, we are getting new information right now. A U.S. official is saying that Iran is preparing an imminent ballistic missile attack on Israel. This comes just after a very, very violent weekend from back and forth of Israel and Hamas. And now we are learning that Iran is preparing this imminent ballistic missile attack that could come at any moment. Israel said its ground troops crossed into Lebanon overnight, launching what the military described as localized raids to root out Hezbollah fighters and infrastructure. Hezbollah denied Israeli troops had entered Lebanon, but hours later, the Israeli army announced it also carried out dozens of ground raids into southern Lebanon going back nearly a year. We are also learning that oil prices are jumping on the concerns of over this Mideast violence and crisis right now. Oil prices jumped on worries about the potential for increased violence in the Middle East and for disruptions to the flow of crude from the region. Right now, a barrel of benchmark U.S. crude rose 3% to top $70. Also seeing that the Egypt is criticizing Israel's serious escalation in Lebanon. Egypt's top diplomat today deplored Israel's serious escalation in southern Lebanon after the Israeli mil military said it launched a limited and focused ground incursion. 
Iran is preparing to imminently launch a ballistic missile attack on Israel, according to a senior U.S. administration official who warned today that there could be severe consequences should it take place there. The, U the official uh, uh, whose name was not given says that the U.S. is actively supporting Israeli defense operations. This comes after uh, the Israeli military uh, today warned people to evacuate uh, nearly two dozen Lebanese border communities hours after announcing what it says were limited ground operations against Hezbollah. So again, uh, we know that this weekend has been very, very serious in the fight of Hezbollah and Israel, the back and forth going on right now. We are also learning of new news, at least 19 dead in airstrikes in Gaza. Israeli airstrikes have killed at least 19 people in the Gaza Strip, including five women and three children. That's according to Palestinian, Palestinian medical officials. So we are keeping an eye on this. Obviously a very, very fluid situation right now as the U.S. has indications that Iran is preparing an imminent ballistic missile attack against Israel. That is the news from a U.S. official. We are going to keep uh, you focused in on this. And once we get more information, again, we will bring that to you here on Live Now from Fox. But again, do want to give you a live look here in Beirut as well as uh, we are continuing to really showcase and analyze everything that is coming in. It's very, very fluid at this time. But again, breaking news is that the U.S. has indications that Iran is preparing imminent ballistic missile attack against Israel. So once we get more information, more news, and more updates, we will provide that to you all right here on live now from Fox. Again, very fluid situation going on there and very tense, of course, in the Middle East, as uh, you can expect. You can smell it. The rail car itself is currently being cooled down. Uh, we did uh, clarify the evacuation uh, for a half mile. There is concerns that uh, with the heat up of the material in the car that there is potential for an explosion. At this point, I don't have any other detailed information. I do know that the mitigation companies are waiting to make access to the car so they can inspect it for its integrity. The roads and the evacuation order for a half mile, the roads will continue to be closed for an, uh, an undetermined amount of time. Uh, it is still evolving. So this will be a long, long event. At this point, I have no reports of any injuries, no civilians or no firefighters. That's a chemical fire there. Whoa. Holy smokes. That's a bio lab. What is it? Release? Oh, that can't be good for all those chemicals to be going up in the Look at that be releasing, man. Holy cow. We're trying to roll out our windows to get them. Yeah, I wanted to get there. Police are out there. Yeah, you think they want to be? They don't have a mask on or anything. trying to route everyone off this one exit right here um, oh gosh did you just see that
We start the top of the hour this morning with a Fox 5 News alert. Thousands of dock workers are on strike, causing ports across the U.S. to close. Yeah, in total, 36 ports shutting down, including the port of Baltimore. Melanie Allenwick is there right now live, and she appears uh, to be telling us since this morning that it's been heating up there, and it hasn't been a, a, a pleasant sight for many folks, especially the drivers coming in. Uh, that's right. So for some people, I think it might have been a bit of a surprise. However, this has been in the news that it could be happening uh, for, for a few weeks now. So uh, you can see the picket lines behind me here. And this is the main entrance to the Port of Baltimore, the Dundalk Terminal. And you'll see they're, they're walking around the picket lines in circles. Now, uh, Baltimore police were here earlier reminding the picketers that they cannot block the entrance to the port. The longshoremen walked off the job at 12.01 a.m. There was confusion and anger as picketers initially tried to stop trucks from entering and it did turn violent. I come here for seven years. I pulled the um, trash and the debris out of here for the uh, for the port of Baltimore and um, the officer told me um, to come back and make um, go in there to get out of my way and they attacked me and broke the windshield and, and, and serrated my face. Look at it. Now, we don't know exactly what happened. The union members said the truck hit one of the picketers as they swarmed around it. We did see an ambulance come to assist, and we know that uh, uh, that gentleman did speak with police officers. Again, we'll, we'll let the uh, authorities sort out exactly what happened there. Now, 45 members of the International Longshoremen's Association, I'm sorry, 45,000 members. That's a big difference in the number, isn't it? Uh, they have all been asking for a 77 percent pay increase over six years and a ban on automation at their ports, a threat to their jobs, they say. Now, most retailers stocked up on goods prior to the strike, but if it lasts more than a few weeks, supply chain experts say it's consumers who are going to feel the direct impact of higher prices and product shortages, especially for things like fresh fruit, coffee, and cars. The U.S. Marine Alliance, which represents the ports, said it offered 50 percent pay increases and an agreement to keep current limits on automation in addition to increased contributions to the retirement plans. But uh, uh, apparently that was not acceptable to the union members. We don't know what the next steps are in terms of the negotiations. Now, we do want to let you know that West Coast ports do remain open. Uh, they are a, a different union and working under a different contract. And many uh, supply chain uh, leaders have, have rerouted some of their goods and supplies. But on the East Coast, uh, we're, it's going to have to be a wait and see situation as to how directly everyone is impacted. I want to let you know that uh, Again, we are going to try to get an interview with one of the local uh, union leaders here uh, as soon as we sign off. And, and if we get anything from, from their point of view, we'll be sure to bring it to you. All right. Thank you so much, Mel. Certainly a lot going on out there this morning.